Hey YouTubers, welcome back to my series professional video production on a shoestring budget. Yeah, I'm really jacked up today. I want to talk to you about the uh, DJI Mini 2. Um, I just got this recently and uh, and I'm really having a lot of fun with it. Uh, I had a DJI Phantom back in the day and, and, uh, and that was a lot of fun, but I found I haven't been flying much the last couple of years. Because of the big Phantom, I need the license and if, you know, the commercial license, blah, blah, blah. So I kind of got away from it. And then I thought I saw the, the Mini 2 at uh, a bundle at Costco. Um, so I did some research and I thought, ah, I deserve a toy. So I jumped in and I grabbed it. Um, $569 up here in Canada. And uh, it came with an extra battery. It came with a bag, which is kind of cheesy. But it came with an extra battery, which, which was kind of, okay, that's a good deal. So I grabbed it. So what I really liked about getting the Mini was for travel. Um, you know, you get it all in that little bag with your spare battery and there's room in there for other accessories. And, uh, you know, I mean, that's beautiful for traveling. And of course the controllers come off and it, it all fits, it's a nice small package. Um, so of course, before I bought it, I went online, did some research, looked at all the YouTube videos and things like that. And what I wanna to do today is, um, I'm gonna sort of do a quick intro overview and, uh, and get flying, get you out there flying. Um, later on in the video, I'll have some more details and I'll have all that time stamped in the information section at the bottom. But, um, but let's, uh, let's get going here. So the first thing you have to do, of course, is install the uh, DJI Fly app. So as soon as you uh, power up the controller, it's gonna open the app for you. Let's power up the drone. That, that little click you hear means that it's on. And then we're going to connect. Press the connect guide button. It's looking for the DJI Mini 2. It's going to start talking to it. And then once it finds it, we're looking at what the drone's looking at here on the phone. Now, it should be bonded at the factory before it's shipped. If it doesn't connect, you can see I've got full bars on the RC telling me that it's connected to the drone. If it doesn't connect, go online. You'll find instructions on how to do that. It's pretty simple, but it should connect. It should be bonded at the factory. So there's a couple of bits of things, bits of information here that are important. Time remaining on your battery. When you're actually outside and you start and you turn the drone on to fly, that will actually um, give you minutes of flight time remaining. Your RC connection and your satellite connection. Um, I've got a tin roof where I live, so that's why I'm not getting any satellite satellite connection for my GPS. When I'm outside, and I turn everything on, this actually turns white once it's connected to satellites. And I get between 14 and 20 satellites where I live. Um, and that's important because that's your GPS. The satellites give you your GPS and that's what makes these things so easy to fly. So these things come pretty much ready to go out of the box. This is your menu settings up here in the top right. And um, the one thing you do want to check is where your auto return home altitude is set. Uh, I've low, I think it came at 100 meters. I've lowered it to 66 meters. That's about 180 feet. Um, your max altitude, your max distance. But the uh, RTH, uh, have a look at that. And uh, we're going to talk about what that does and how that works in a minute. And that's important. But for now, you don't really have to know anything else in the menu. You're going to want to learn that later and familiarize yourself with it. But you want to get out there and go flying and you don't have to know everything that's in that menu. And I'm going to talk about some of the features that are in that menu later on. And I'll have everything timestamped down below. Uh, now, I suggest if 
if you're just learning how to fly a drone, um, don't, you know, don't try to absorb too much all at once. Forget about setting up a camera if you've never done that, if you don't know ISO and, and uh, shutter speed and things like that. Just use auto mode on the camera. Okay, let's go fly. Um, so the first thing you want to do when you're outside is, you know, give yourself lots of room. And uh, have a look around, check out your surroundings, make sure there's no, no overhead wires or any of that kind of nasty stuff. And um, turn on your controller, turn on your drone, let everything get locked up. Check your phone for GPS uh, lockup, and uh, you should have the message that says you're ready to fly. So press the auto takeoff button and uh, the round button in the middle and let her go. You need to understand how the return to home button on the controller works. Um, now, if, if, if you're in trouble and you've lost sight of the drone, you can press that return home button once and it will stop the drone. And, and you can try to reorient yourself and it'll just hover in place. And you can go out and try to find it and, you know, get reorient, reoriented. Um, if the drone's taken off on you, and I've had this happen with my Phantom, and it, it's not responding to the controller, that's when you use that return to home feature. You press it and hold it, the drone will stop, hover in one place, and it'll rise up to the preset altitude that's in there for return to home. It'll rise up to that altitude, uh, 180, 200 feet. You wanna have it set so that it's gonna clear any trees or tall buildings. It'll rise to that altitude and the drone will come back to the home point It'll come down and it'll land at home point. Um, so it's important to understand how that works and, uh, and when you might need, to, uh, might need to use it. I find it a little bit disconcerting. I try to avoid using it. But if you're way out there and, uh, you know, you've been looking at the screen and you're, 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 the, the, the drone is long gone, you can't see it, use that return to home feature and it'll bring it back for you. So what I suggest you do when you're just starting out, if you've, never th if you've never flown a drone before, is take it easy and don't uh, go too high. Stay low to begin with. When it takes off, it's going to hover around four feet. And the other thing I suggest you do is keep the back of the drone facing you, that green flashing light, keep that facing you. And that way the controls will correspond with the direction of the drone just until you get a feel for it. So, you know, you can get a bit of height. You know, you can go up and get a little bit of height. You know, try going forward and side to side and see what that does and just get a feel for the controls. It's easy to fly, they're very stable. The key to these things is the GPS satellite lock. That's the key to give you that stable flight. It also gives you your return to home point Another thing I would suggest, if you're learning, um, when you take off, hover above your home point, have a look at your screen, make sure that all your important information is still there and that you're in, you know, that you're in the ballpark. Um, but when you're learning, don't look at the screen, look at the drone. Because, you know, if you have trees around you especially. The other day I was looking at the screen and I looked up and man, I just about... I, I just about flew into that fifth wheel over there. Oh, things can go wrong really quickly. Uh, and 
and I and I have had things go wrong really quickly. As I said, my first drone about ten years ago was the Phantom One, and um, so you couldn't even monitor the drone with a smartphone. You know, it was like manual flying. You took off, and you're kept an eye on the drone. And um, uh, you know, when I talk about keeping the drone in front of you, one of the first mistakes I made in one of my early flights was I let the drone go behind me. So I had to turn around, got completely disoriented, and I crashed it into some trees. So keep it in front of you. That's really important when you're, especially when you're learning. And, and keep an eye on the drone. If you've, um, if you've been doing some research and looking at the Facebook page, you probably have read about some of the people um, losing their drones in the wind or having problems in the wind. Uh, what I suggest you do when you're when you're ready to go up and do some, you know, get some more altitude, um, if there's a little bit of wind, just go up slowly, right above your home point. Don't go out there and then go up. S stay right above your home point and just go up slowly. And maybe if you can go up 10 or 20 feet and hover and see how your drone's reacting because obviously the wind up higher up can be quite different from ground level. Um, now, if you're in an area with trees, this is really important because you can get what's called wind shear effect just above the trees. So go up slowly, and when you get near those treetops, hover and see how your drone's reacting and make sure it's stable, and then go up a little bit more, you know, until you get above those trees and give it a sec, and just make sure your drone's stable. Um, if there is some wind and it's, and it's a location and a day when you really have to get the shot and there's a little bit of wind, put it into sport mode. That's going to give you more power to fight the wind. If you can, go out against the wind so that if you're finding that you're really fighting it, you can turn around and you're coming back to home point with the wind. If you lose it in the wind and you can't see it, point your gimbal to the ground and find a place to land, a safe place to land, because um, you don't want to lose the drone. And remember, these drones are only 250 grams, so they're pretty light. When I, read, when I downloaded the app onto my phone, um, I didn't open it right away. I downloaded it, then I went on to other things, and then I sat down and went, okay, I'll, I'll you know, open the app and you know, turn on the, uh, the drone and you know, go into the app and check things out. It wouldn't let me go into the app. Uh, I forget what the warning was. It, it wouldn't accept a password or something. So as soon as you download that app, open it and register you know, your email address and password um, because I had to re I had to uninstall it and reinstall it on my phone to get it to work. So that's important. A couple of things that you're going to want to do in here before you even might want to fly, allow upward gimbal rotation. Um, I'm not sure why you have to even select that. That upward gimbal rotation gives you an additional 20 degrees, I don't, um, upward rotation on the gimbal, which is kind of cool. If uh, your phone's getting low, you can actually charge it from the controller. Now you'll find that, you'll find that in that main menu. Um, and open up the menu and it's in the control section and scroll down and you'll find phone charging, which is really a handy thing to have if you need it. So keep that in mind. But an important part about recording video on the controller um, is that if you're recording video uh, on the drone, before you turn the power off, you must stop recording. Um, otherwise, you lose your recording. It, it's a weird, it's it's a weird setup. But they've done that from day one. My my uh, AS15 was like that. So if you're recording video, don't forget the button's over here. Start your recording. And uh, you have to stop recording before you shut down the controller in the drone. Very important. 
I found the battery takes about four hours to charge. So be aware of that. I, I, that's why I really like the idea with this bundle that I was getting a, a second battery. It takes, like I say, about four hours to charge. Something else I wanted to mention to you that's important is these batteries will start losing charge in about five days. So if you haven't used the drone for a few weeks, a month, make sure your batteries are charged before you uh, go out and fly. That's worse than getting out of the field, especially if you're in a beautiful location and your batteries are dead. You know, there's lots of videos on YouTube that'll tell you all about all the settings in here. You don't have to know everything. Familiarize yourself with the settings. It's telling me I should calibrate the compass. And again, it's because I have a metal roof. I haven't actually, once I've been outside, seen that uh, message and I haven't done it. Um, okay, everybody, thanks for watching. Um, have a lot of fun with your drone. Uh, it's, they're amazing little, uh, these are amazing little machines. Um, I'm really enjoying it. I've only had it out a few times. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching and uh, check out my other videos. Check out my series professional video production on a shoestring budget. Um, you'll find lots of, uh, you'll find lots of good stuff in there. I've got lots of videos about my uh, Insta 361R. I've also recently picked up a, a Quest 2. Uh, virtual reality headset. I've had it for a year. I've got some videos on that. I've got some videos on how to shoot virtual reality video uh, with this camera, you know, for viewing uh, it's on YouTube VR. So check some of that stuff out. Cheers. Thanks for watching.